Guys, back for another one. Um, this one's another requested video, and surprisingly, this one's about bluefish, or, you know, as we know in Australia, uh, Taylor. I've been asked by a few different people, um, some of my favourite lures and ways to catch Taylor, as, you know, we're coming into winter here in southeast Queensland. Uh, a lot of people are going to be hitting the beaches and looking for these fish. Okay, so all I was going to do is just give you a rundown on some of the lures and stuff I use um, in the surf. Uh, to catch Taylor, the basic, well, just a basic rig for you guys who are new to it. Um, yeah, and what sort of leader and stuff I use. Yeah, just bits and pieces on bluefish or uh, Taylor. Surprisingly, they've been asking me before to do the video on bluefish. Not many people have been calling them Taylor, so I find that a bit strange. But anyway, they want to know. Let's get into it. First of all, uh, here in southeast Queensland, the weather's cooling down. We're getting into winter. We do see a lot of tailor here, and generally they're smaller fish, they're schooling fish over the uh, cooler months. A lot of people like to go to the beach and chase them a lot, like late, late afternoon into the night with lures and baits. And you can catch quite a few tailor doing this. They're never real big ones. You can catch a few nice greenbacks amongst them, but mainly legal size. And um, yeah, not too big, but just numbers. And they do respond very well to lures and baits. They're not, once you find them, they're not a hard fish to catch. Um, I generally don't bait fish for them. I prefer to use lures, and I, I think lures are a lot of fun. And I do it a bit different anyway, guys. I don't get tend to go to the surf beach much anymore and fish. I, if I do it, I'm what I call reverse surf fishing. I'm in a boat, we go into the gutters when it's nice and calm in the Wesleys. And we cast our lures basically to the beach or onto the beach, onto the sand, and work them back that way. And that's how we find a lot of big fish, but I'll explain about, a bit about that in a minute. We'll start off with Bat to Basics Taylor here, Southeast Queensland, WA, um, New South Wales. You catch Taylor. Um, surprisingly, a lot of places around this country. And the most famous rig, well, the easiest rig for people to get into to chase Taylor on the beach is just basically a running ball sinker. So this is going to be a running sinker rig, okay? So you've got your ball, your swivel. Leader, down to your gang tooks, which I've already tangled. Off to a flying start. Okay. So this is just your basic tailor rig. Running ball, that's I think about a size of four. You don't want to go too big because once you put a, you got the sinker on there and you've got a whole pill in gang tooks, it's quite a lot of weight. And if you've got too much weight, you can't cast. So you've got to have a balanced outfit, rod, wheel, line, and you know, rig. Everything needs to be balanced to get a good cast out. But anyway, that's the rig. Uh, to gang hooks, most guys use gang hooks. We don't use wire, even though Taylor have teeth. That's the reason we're using gang hooks. You don't really get bitten off of the gangs. You might, in a blue moon every now and again, get bitten off. But you know, that's just fishing. But definitely don't run wire, guys. You'll catch a lot more fish without wire. You really will. And with the gang hooks, we usually run anywhere from a 3.0 to a 4.0 size, depending on the pilchers at the time. Like, as you all guys know, some of the pillies will get rather can be rather small, and then next batch they can be really big. So match your gang talks to the size of the pilchards you're going to use, okay? If they're big pillies, use four O's. If there's yeah, mediums, run three O's. If there's little tiny tackers, run two O's. Just run gang talks to match the size to the pilchards. And that's your basic tailor rig. We do this late afternoon and early morning for them in the surf. Uh, generally fishing around gutters, but don't cast your baits into the gutters as the tailor are usually found in the white water A lot of guys try and flick their baits out the back over the gutter towards where the breakers are at the back next to the like the entrance um, So next to the rip basically the entrance to the gutter So next to the rip on the white water try and get these or if you can't reach out there Walk along the gutters until you find the white water and just fish the edge of the gutters. Don't actually cast in, put these in the gutters. You're not chasing whiting or jewel or anything else in the gutters. You're chasing tailor and tailor like, this, like the white water. They use it as cover, okay? So that's just a basic rig. Easy way to get started, gang talks, whole pilchard. Fish the edge of the gutters or you know, the back, right out the back if you, if you can cast that far, okay? Not actually in the deep water. Um, and most of the time, I'm running lures. I'd like to use lures more than baits for Taylor. If I'm catching Taylor on baits, it's usually offshore on the reefs and I'm not actually targeting them, they just annoy me, so <laughs> I catch them that way. But if I go looking for Taylor, 
I run lures. I'm going to go through the lures now. I usually run a 40 pound trace. 30 or 40 is fine. Um, okay, if I'm running the 40 with black magic, it's quite a thin 40, so it's not bad. Or a 30 pound's fine too. It won't matter if the tail is teeth in it, it won't matter if it's like 20 pound or 50 pound. If they're teeth in it, they're going to go through it. I just generally run 30 to 40 because I like chasing a bigger tailor. Okay, and I'll, you, sometimes you need to put a bit of hurt in these fish because the bigger fish in the shallow waters really go hard. Like if you get a big tailor in shallow water, you know about it. They go hard, they're good fun. Okay, and the way I like to do it is, like I said, I call it reverse surf fishing because I usually go on my boat on when it's nice and wet, when they get westerlies and there's only a little bit of swell, like a tiny bit of swell, we'll actually drive into the gutters. Hey guys. Once again, um, the gear I like to use when I'm going reverse surf fishing. This is my little outfit I have here. So this is a Stratic 4000, a nice thin 20 pound braid. Cause I like to put a bit of, try and put a bit of hurt in some of these bigger fish. Um, so they really do go hard. And this is like a eight kilo, seven foot rod, which garrett graphite rod quite stiff. So I get a lot of action on my lures and you can set the hooks. So just a nice little, Light outfit, a 4,000 reel, 20 pound braid, seven foot rod, about eight kilo or so, with a nice stiff tip. So when a tailor grabs these bigger lures, you can actually set the hooks, and then you can try and put a bit of hurt on the big ones because they do go hard, even on this gear, they go. Um, we'll get into the lures. What we'll do, we'll start off with, a, um, for most of you, off the beach. Um, once again, late afternoon, early morning, if you're not bait fishing, a lot of guys will be casting, they cast metal slugs. Like this is just a, like a sniper, like a raider, there's a sniper there. That's a 35 gram. That's a nice little lure to cast, but on the bigger rods, like the 10 foot rods, 12 foot rods, that's quite light and probably a bit harder to cast. You can buy these in like 50 gram, 55 gram, I think 60 gram sort of range. A lot of guys run these in 60s. 60 gram on a 10 foot rod, 20 to 30 pound line, on a surf reel, and you can cast it quite a long way. And then just wind like the clappers. No twitching on them, just cast it out. Just wind, just wind fast. Get this thing really skipping along the surface and flashing. And that's all there is to it. And Taylor will jump on it. If they're there in the area, they'll jump on it. If you're using gear like I've got there, uh, from a boat or fishing, you don't, you know the Taylor only a bit close, you don't even cast miles and you can use a little gear. These little slugs work fine as well, okay? Just little 20 gram slugs, things like these work fine. Once again, just wind fast, get them. Now the thing about these slugs is, these little tiny ones here, is when you find little schooling fish like here in River Mouse or in bays or the Gold Coast Broadwater, places like that, you'll find, you'll find quite a few schooling fish. These little slugs like this are awesome, okay? That's what they'll eat. That's what they're in the shallow water eating, like little white baits and things like this. Match the hatch, they work well. Um, but we'll get into my favourite way of doing it, like that's just about the basics for chasing bigger tail on smaller tail on the surf and the, and if you chase them in the broad water, just use them like lures. Slugs is the main one, metal slugs. Um, but what I prefer to do is a few years ago, Samaki and I can't remember the other brand come out with these. These are like a slug as well, but they're a resin, a resin slug. Okay, they're not very big but they've got quite a lot of weight to them. So these things you can really cast a long way. And when you get them, when you want these fast, because they've got a flat bottom, you actually get these on the surface, keep them on the surface and splashing and carrying on. They work really well. And I like these because you can cast the bloody things a mile. You can cast them a really long way. And Taylor respond very well to them. So do mackerel actually, but we're talking about Taylor or bluefish. as a lot of you guys are calling it lately. Okay, so just these resin slugs, awesome. In the shallows as well, in the bays, in the broad water, like river mouths and stuff, they work very well as, as well. And the surf, they're really good. Okay. Um, next thing is stick baits. This is my preferred way to do it. I love casting stick baits for Taylor. Okay, there's a couple of ways. So if you're going off the beach casting stick baits, like the lighter ones, the floating ones, can be a bit hard to get distance off the beach. Um, so you can use like things like these. These are a sinking stick bait, so they've got quite a lot of weight to them. Okay, so these things you'll be able to peg out a freaking mile and just one like the clappers. Okay, and nice chrome ones like this. 
nice and shiny in the surf, especially on a sunny afternoon or sunny morning. Good way to find a few tailor. Even the little white one here is a nice one. It's got a few fish over the years. Um, it's got a bit of chrome down there. You probably can't see it, but it's got a bit of chrome on the belly, which is shiny. And this is another good one for the shallows and river mouths and stuff too, because it's only small. It's you know, matched the hatch size of the bait they're using. So if you're looking for school fishing close, little ones like this, but a sinking one. So you can actually cast a long way, especially if the schools are like really flighty and a bit spooked. You can sit off, sit off them a bit further and cast little slugs like this a long way. So hopefully you can get close to them without spooking them. Um, but my absolutely all time favorite way to chase them is this big, not big, but you know, medium sized floating stick baits. I love casting these things in the surf and watching the surface strike on big fish. Big fish hit these, surface strike in the surf. It's great. It is really fun fishing. You can cast these off the beach too if you've got a well balanced outfit. They have got a little bit of weight from the ball bearings, so you can hear the rattle. But if the wind's blowing in your new face or something, you're not going to get very far with these because they're a floating stick bait, they're quite light. So these are the ones I prefer to use when I'm in the boat, in the gutters, because I'm generally not that far from the beach, so I can usually peg these out, hit the surf, and work back on okay from the beach. Because the way we do it from the boat is if we're just hitting in the deep water. We cast onto the beach in the first, say, 20 feet from the beach out to the boat where you've got all the little little bit of the white water. We find a lot of big tailor along there. Most people are standing standing in that water, fishing, casting out towards us. And we're actually casting and hooking up fish where they're standing. And every now and again, we find a guy on the surf beach who'll turn around and cast down the beach to block our casting. You know, because they're getting the shit watching us catch fish <laughs> from their feet. Um, gets entertaining. So just floating stick baits, I just use them because I love watching the things go on the surface and the tailor strikes on the surface on stick baits is great. It is absolutely good fun. Like this thing, I bought this the other day, I thought I was going to try for flathead. It's meant to be a slow float and I thought I'll get it down to use the jerk bait. My mistake, I should have known better with that bib, that's not going to get down. That was a good stick bait. I watched it on the surface, going along the surface, tail kick and stuff. It looked like a little fleeing bait fish on the surface. It looked really good on the surface. So once again, that's a pro lure. That'll make a great tailor lure, a great tailor stick bait. It really will. Um, maybe this winter we might get out and try it again and see how we go and give these type of things a crack. But that in the surf, you can see how nice and shiny it is on the surface, um, splashing around, just a nice stick bait. That going through the waves and watching like a four kilo tailor come up and hit that off the surface. Entertaining, good fun. And hang the hell on. It's cross I go hard. Um, okay. And there's only one other thing I'm gonna show you here, guys. And a lot of this is something a lot of people don't do. And it works very well. And I know it works well, I do use it, but I prefer the stick base because I prefer to watch, you know, I like this watching the action and the surface strike. But if you're not if you're just going down there to catch a few fish, you don't care about watching the action on the surface, you just want to cook a few fish for a feed or have a bit of fun, don't forget like little twitch baits or jerk baits like this in the surf. A lot of people don't do it, and you should. This is a great way to find some bluefish, once again, aka Taylor. Little tiny bibs, cast this out on the edge of the gutters, like where the water's, water's rolling along the edges, because you probably won't cast it right out the back, because these are quite light. I'm not talking about sinking ones, these are floating. Okay, and then really twitch them really hard and wind and twitch and wind and twitch. Don't stop and pause, just work it really hard, really fast, really erratic in the surf. And get ones that are nice and like silvery like this one. So they flash and sign early morning, late afternoon. And work these along the edge of the gutters, especially in winter. Little jerk baits, they are deadly on Taylor. Taylor love these things. You'll catch a heap of tailor from small to large on these. So once again, if you're looking for going down and just hook some fish and looking for a feed, try some jerk baits, little jerk baits like little bibs, where they just um, just under the surface and along the edge of the gutters. Great way to find tailor. Um, I don't use them a lot anymore because I've like I said, like the surface strike. I like just watching the show, having a bit of fun that way. Um, well, I think that's about it, guys. Um, tailor fishing, once again, bluefish, um, are a lot of fun in the surf. They're a nice eating fish. A lot of people do really enjoy them as long as you bleed them straight away and then put them in ice or 
Some guys just stick their head in the sand for a while, let them bleed out, and then put them on ice. That works. But make sure you bleed them straight away. Look after them, put them on ice, and they're a really nice eating fish. And, well, if you get a couple of extra ones, you're not going to eat them. They also make good baits for jewies. Don't throw them out whole. Fill them or butterfly them and throw them out. They're a good bait for a jewfish. And you will find jewfish where you'll find tailor, but with the jewies, you'll want to put a big bait into the gutters. And then you can walk to the edge of the gutter and chase tailor at the same time. Either either. But while you're catching tailor, um, the jewies probably won't be far behind because they do eat them and they don't mind eating them. So if you're not going to eat it, share one and see if you pick up a jewie. Um, that's what I used to do years ago. You chase both at the same time and have a bit of fun. And I know a lot of guys do now as well. Put a jewy bait out that slow fishing. Then walk down the beach a little bit and start chasing tailor. And then use some tailor for jewy baits. Just make sure they're legal size. <laughs> Anyway, guys, I hope that helps. Um, I hope you have a bit of fun. I'm going to suggest buy some stick baits, give them a crack in the surf, cast them from the beach or from a boat, but be bloody careful if you're doing the boat thing, please. Um, I suggest going from the beach, it's safer. And just cast some stick baits and watch some of the surface strikes on some tailor. You'll love it. It's good fun. It really is fun. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, hope you give it a crack over winter. And if you like the channel, once again, please hit the subscribe button as it really does help me out. Thanks, guys. See you again shortly.